Creating with Creators podcast with our guest, Zach Johnson. Owner Thank you so much, man. Thank HBZ me. Media. What's going on, everyone? This is Zach Johnson here from HBZ Media. I am so happy to be on this podcast and to uh, reconnect with you, man. Right. So, I mean, we met, I thought, three years ago at this point now. It was at Johnny Cupcakes, the boss anniversary. I think it was the 13th anniversary because 13, yeah. it was, I was struggling to remember the year, but I can remember the shirts. And I think it was like a, it was a lucky 13 or unlucky 13 themed one. That was a 2019. It was 2019, I think. Yeah. 2019. Yeah. It was on. Um, Cause I remember like, this was actually one of the shirts from the 2019 release. I saw that you had the yeah. Johnny Cupcakes. Yeah. Like the, the swag on. I exactly. Love it. Cause it's like, I never actually got any of those anniversary shirts. So I didn't like them enough, but like, I like this one. So I was like, I'm going to get the gradient one. That's awesome. Yeah. That was like one of the most surprising DMs I've gotten. Yeah. That's like, cause I've always like looked up to Johnny and like some of the stuff that he had going on. And right. he always, he would come to Waltham High School and all that good oh, stuff. My sweet. friends loved like all the clothing brand stuff from him. So yeah, to see that DM text this is like, was like, exciting. what? Yeah. Why am I getting this? You right. know what I'm saying? But I think I had some mutual friends that pointed him in the right direction. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Cause I remember like literally like, that day, I think I was really just doing photos for the whole event, but you yep, were doing video, right. and I was just like, I like what he's doing. It looks a lot more fun than I'm doing. <laughs> <laughs> so funny, that day, like, I don't know if anyone knows this story, but, like, I got, like, one of my favorite lenses that day. I've been on the prowl for the 24 GM 1.4, and I, like, bought, I was like, this is so important to me. I need to get this lens. Yeah. I literally got it the day of the event, like, an hour before. So did you use it that day? Oh, okay. dude, the only lens I used right. that day was that. It was so awesome. That's so. Great. You're a big into music videos. I mean, you do a lot of different things, but when anytime I look you up, it's like, oh, Zach's doing this awesome music video. <laughs> music so like, videos, yeah. I'm not going to ask you your story because you've done that a million times on other kind of podcasts and episodes. So I just want to like, what is a music video to you? Like, what do you think is important about music videos? Um, I think it's the overall experience for the viewer and for the artist. I, it's just so cool, man, being able to work with these artists that pay such special attention to their craft and then, you know, being able to work with them and being able to do what I do and, you know, collaborate and, and do all that fun stuff. It's just, it's just an experience, man. It's a feeling. And then just, it's so different from all the different forms of media that I do because it's where I can be the most creative. And I love working with music. Like there's times where I'll like deny artists just because of like the music and it has to align with the brand and everything like yeah. that. But the music is so important to me. Yeah. It's like, it just, I just feel like it drives us, you know? So like when you were at like your crossroads that a lot of us creatives get to, cause we jump into, I want to do photography or videography. Then you get to that crossroads. It's like, okay, which like genre am I going to choose? Why'd you choose music? I think music has always just been a part of my life. Like a lot of people, I, I mean, growing up, I listened to Biggie, uh, Nas is like one of my favorite, like Illmatic is like one of my favorite albums. Um, and I just feel like I've always been entrenched like in hip hop and like that's always been my thing. So I always like wanted to like work towards that. And it's just been so cool because we're in such a new era of hip hop right now. The hip hop right now is totally different from what we're hearing right. in the it's, 90s. It's always early. constantly changing. Constantly changing. Yeah. So to be able to work with this art, these artists is like super cool. And like the artists that I work with, uh, I mean, I can definitely go into that a little bit later. But like, yeah, like these are like my guys, like, you know, I mean, there's mutual respect and mutual love for them. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So is there a creator out there that like you saw his work first? You're like, I kind of want to like model myself kind of in a similar way to this creator. So I can slowly kind of like figure out what I'm doing. That is a good question. So I definitely have a mentor. His name is LTD, Lionel. He's from Waltham. He graduated with my sister. So he's like five years older. Yeah. But I, when I was getting into the music videos, like he'd always bring me on set. So like just seeing his work and like his smooth camera, you know, movement and all that good stuff. Like that's like that somebody. Um, and then you just get ideas from people in Boston, like, you know, growing up and creative Ryan. I feel like we both know, like, YC images yeah. and everything like that, like seeing what they do. I definitely feel like not mimicking, but like taking a little bit right. from them, you know? Because like one thing, like people are like, oh, you're copying this big creator. But the thing is, everyone's learned from someone. Right. So it's kind of like if you're going to say you're copying, everyone's copied, like. Even in school, like if you're whatever field you're in, you're copying the information the teacher is giving you. So like Absolutely. everyone's a copycat to some degree. What's that? What's that saying in writing? Like good artists like take and the best artists like steal or something yeah. like that. Yeah, I feel like that kind of goes hand in hand because like it's so funny because like most of everything has been done before. Right. right. Like so it's like we're all doing kind of like similar things and just like a different way so exactly. i feel like that's the coolest thing about music videos right now is like how can we stretch that and do something that's like 
pretty much never been done before right to the like most extent because mostly everything's been like you know done, done yeah to a certain extent yeah hashtag vanilla ice but <laughs> hashtag vanilla ice <laughs> so, biggest copycat of all time yo true <laughs> where do you see yourself going with this like do you see yourself like is there a mountaintop peak with the music video industry that you see yourself getting to or is this just like a side thing and you just want to go in a different direction in your future? Oh, that's such a good question. Yes, man, you got some good questions today. Um, that is a really good question. Um, for me, I know I want to go more towards the, like, the cinematic route in terms of like short movies or what have you, like maybe bigger productions. But I think also at the same time, turning music videos into those short movies, short productions yeah. is like a lane that I definitely want to go in. Well, also, you know what I'm saying? Like, I think the weddings will always be like, something that I do too, but like trying to challenge myself to do something that we're like, whoa, like movies, like yeah. what? Like being able to be like a part of a movie or direct it or be a producer for it. Like imagine like sitting down on the couch with your friends and like, man, that's a good movie. I'm like, yeah, I directed that. Yeah, yeah. I directed that. <laughs> you didn't know, but exactly. yeah, I directed that. I so, think that's super cool, yeah. So like that's like right at the top, but let's pretend like we're way at the bottom, like day one, I'm a new beginner. I want to make music videos. Like what kind of gear should I be looking at to get? I think uh, I always say this to people who are starting out, the best piece of equipment is what you have. So whether it be an iPhone or you have a Canon Rebel that you, I started with the Canon Rebel, you know, yeah. I like took my check from uh, my workplace. I worked at Costco's. I was I was a sample guy. at yeah. one point. <laughs> people laugh at me. Yeah, man, I used to, you know, give the samples out and all that good stuff. But yeah, man, like I took that money and bought like a Canon Rebel T5i and used it ever since. Use it for music video production and all types of production. But my, my saying is like, hey, unless you have a red, like use what you have, you right. know? So there's a lot of big challenges in the music video industry from like what you've told me, what I've seen other music video guys online talk about. So what's like almost like the, your biggest pet peeve that you have to deal with making these music videos? <laughs> Um, I think it it's, it goes even deeper than like just like the making and creation of the music videos. Like there's a whole business side in terms of like which music videos you decide to shoot and you know the people, the artists in the DM like being like, how much you charge? How yeah. much you charge? How much you charge? Hey, what's up? Yeah. <laughs> Not even like, you know what I mean? There's a different like level of approach. Like I think that's like one of my biggest pet peeves. Um, uh, also, like I think the another pet peeve is something along the lines of like the artist having like the same ambition as me like yeah. the same like willingness to like compete and and do our best right. you know so i think that's like another thing that that goes into that too so like dealing with like a bunch of those like kind of like ongoing challenges like at the end of the day like what makes you like keep going like if you have a rough like shoot with a client what's like i want to keep doing this even if it's with that client or another client like What's like the Zach Johnson, like inside boy saying like, now you got to keep going. Like, what's he said? I was meant for this, man. Yeah. Like at the end of the day, that's why I say to myself, like, there's definitely going to be rough, you know, shoots or uh, I try to limit those. You know what I'm saying? I try yeah. to do my best, but there's not everything is going to happen how you want it to happen all the time. You know what I'm saying? So you take what you get and you do the best that you can. And like to answer your question, I just know that this is for me yeah. and that like, I'm just going to keep on pushing on because it's easy to fold when, when things get rough, you know what I'm saying? So exactly. just for me, like just put, keep on pushing on. Like, and I think that's why I've grown so much over these last few years is like things haven't always been easy. Things haven't always been handed to me, but I like went out and, and got it, man. Like I went out and, and, and did it and performed and executed, you know, when things got tough. Right. Can I ask you a question that kind of picks your creative mind just a bit? Yeah. So when I watch your videos, like you've got a bunch of different kinds of footage, you've got different transitions, you've got different cuts, you've got kind of different styles you do with each different artist. So like when you're sitting down and you're trying to make a video while you're shooting, when does Zach decide like, okay, I'm going to do like a full shot now then we do like three quick cuts where like stuff's masked out then it's masked back in like when you're trying to think of like all the crazy music video transitions like when you decide i'm going to do it like is it while you're doing the process and writing it out with the artist or is it like in post where like oh this would look cool if i did this oh man good question yeah. again um i'm an impulse guy i go yeah. with the feeling like a lot of the times i feel like I would listen to the song and I'd hear it and I'd be like, I know we're going to do, I know at three minutes or like songs are shorter now, yeah. one minute and 58 seconds, we're going to hit them with this transition. Yeah. We're going to do this. But a lot of it is like in post, some of it is in post after. And I think 
that's like the, one of the bigger things for me is like having like everything, everything like planned out and then just being able to execute. Cause once you know what you want, you can literally do like anything you want. You know right. what I'm saying? So like, do you got like a go-to transition that you love to pull out? Uh, I love the masking. Like, you know what I mean? Like masking things out and everything like yeah. that. Actually shout out to my boy, Ty, my, my new intern. He's going to be doing a lot of the VFX for my music video this year. Sh- uh, check him out. Lighthouse films. He is incredible. But, um, yeah, like the masking out transition, the zoom ins, like, um, I don't, I stay away from the fades and all that stuff. Yeah. But yeah, like, I don't know if there's a certain like HB, HBZ transition that I do. Um, yeah, like the mascot. I try to also stay away from the transitions if they're like not needed. Yeah. But sometimes I feel like I gotta go off. Right. <laughs> sometimes exactly. I feel like I gotta hit him with the zoom and the and the mask out and and the and the fade and this and that and the other thing. But yeah, mm-hmm. like I try and keep it chill when it comes to transitions because sometimes those get to be too much and people just want to see things for what they are. Right. You know. So actually, just I want to ask you transition right into that business kind of question because you brought up your intern a few times. So just to do a little shout out to Ty right now. So like, yes. what was your decision to be like, I need help doing this. I love his work. I want to bring him on with the stuff I do. Yeah, no, absolutely. So like, I've always seen myself as like, and I don't want to talk myself down, but like, I do the standard like music video stuff. Like I can get the right shots. I can shoot in sequence. We can get the lighting right. We can do this, that, and the other thing. But I always felt like one of the things I didn't really like excel in was always a special effects. Like yeah. learning blender after effects like whenever after effects would like come onto the screen i'd it's be like, like nope <laughs> nope you freeze like it's just like this is a monster and it's under my bed and i don't want to deal with it yet i know like i'll open up after effects and be like what yeah <laughs> you know what i'm saying but um so my old uh tv teacher jeff whiteley shout out to him we're doing shout outs all year all, all, all time during this podcast um he gave the idea that hey i had this kid who's like really good at vfx like you should check him out. Like, let me know what you think. I looked at his work. He did something for, um, hopefully I do not space out on his name right now. Um, he's a director that directed, I'll think of it. Matt Alonzo, Matt okay. Alonzo, super talented director, but he did some work for Matt Alonzo. And I was like, no way. Like yeah. well, I've always looked up to Matt Alonzo and I had a music video that I shot. We, we didn't get to do everything we wanted to do with it. There's supposed to be dirt bikes and all that stuff. I yeah. was like, look, I need VFX for this and I know it. So I reached out to him and he was super game for it and he killed it. I was like, dude, what? Yeah. He killed it. That's sweet. And that was the first official YouTube video I got to put on my channel, like music video that I got yeah. to put an HBZ media exclusive or whatever. That's awesome. But um, yeah, so that's that's pretty much how we met. And we figured out that he would be my intern this for this upcoming year. And he's an amazing kid. Not just like, a, not only just like a great like VFX artist, but just like a great kid too. And like means really well. Could you give us like a little like sneak peek of like projects you might be working on? It's yeah, way absolutely. Soon. We have um, more of a bellies. Um, more of a belly shout out to Morph, um, artist from Lynn, great talent. Um, he has a, we have a music video we're working on right now called Me Hot, and it's a, a fun, fun record. We went out and, you know, shot some really cool stuff that day. We were actually at like another music video, and we, we still shot for our music video, yeah. it was super sick. So we have that, and couple other things i can't give everything but yeah. that me hot music video is coming out soon and it's gonna be hot all right before sure. we, before we move on from music videos what musician do you want like all time like what's your favorite musician that you want to make a music video with and is it a song they've yet to make or a song they have made that you love oh dude <laughs> dude i'd love to shoot for kanye i'd love to shoot for kanye like New Kanye or old Kanye? Yo, you already know old Kanye, but yeah, like graduation was like yeah. one of my favorites. Like, you know what I'm saying? Uh like um like flashing lights, like I think that would be like my like dream like music video right. shoot. I just love that song. Um and before we like stop talking about music videos, I just want to shout out to some of the artists that like Go I work with. Me. Um shout out to Maystar. Uh we put out like probably like 15 or 16 music videos out in a short film last year. That's my guy. He is incredible. And these artists are just like my boys. Like I got, yeah. like I have like a lot of love and like respect for him. He dropped two albums this year, uh, Supermoon, uh, this past year, Supermoon and um, 
May Day 2020. And he's just an extremely great talent. And I love working with him. Um, shout out to Morbid Belly. I had just mentioned he has a lot of new work coming up. We have a lot of new work coming up. Um, I feel like um, working with him was really cool because he did editing and and video making at one point so right. we're always able to work yeah, on these kind of projects it's amazing when like artists outside your field know stuff inside Dude, your they field know what's up. yeah and i hate to bring up like tory lanes because of everything that like happened with him but he edits like his own music videos too which is like crazy and then of course i need to shout out my boy debo from waltham my boy muna from waltham so much love for you guys like debo is the reason why i even met some like more of a belly and like Maystar and like some of the artists I know. And Muna is an awesome talent. Um, he has new work coming out. We just dropped whips and chains about, you know, we actually dropped it on my birthday. So shout out to him, yeah. incredible artists and freaky P and, you know, a bunch of other artists I work with. Shout out to you guys. So much love for you guys, man. All right, Zach. So tangenting away from music videos. So we talked a little about, about the wedding kind of game. So do you have like any experience or things you want to talk about in the wedding photography? Industry? Absolutely. So I was always scared to do wedding photography. Like yeah. for some reason, like I could shoot wedding videos. That's my thing. Like I, you know what I'm saying? Um, but the wedding photography I actually shot like one of my first weddings like ever. Yeah. Um, shout out to Leanne and Paul trusted me to shoot their wedding. Like, I appreciate that. Um, but yes, I like shot my first wedding and it went really well. And I got to set up lighting and do all the things I do with video, but do that. But yeah, like um, I'm mostly focus on wedding videography and i love it i love working with the couples it's super awesome they're trusting me with their most important day right. so to be able to tell their love story and in my way is super important to me and i take a lot of pride in my wedding videography um again like i said it's awesome working with couples um i got to shoot a couple weddings this past year including my sister's which was like a, That's backyard, pretty sweet. a backyard wedding they were supposed to go to new orleans and unfortunately you know that yeah. didn't happen but um and i got to shoot a couple other backyard weddings and one on a boat so that was like really cool um the toughest things we were talking about this on the phone like one of the toughest things about the wedding videography is the switch from after the ceremony to uh, the reception, reception yeah. where you have to set up lighting, set up audio, so everything sounds good on the yeah. mics and everything like that. And then somehow, get shots. while the photographer yeah. is taking up most of the time getting the shots, rightfully so, get like five to ten minutes with the bride. Hopefully, like in my world, it'd be like an hour. I need right. like an hour with the bride and groom. Like, you know what I'm saying? Get all the shots because those are like the bread and butter shots. Right, like that was probably video. the most like pure emotion, like before people see them again. Absolutely. And just like where things can get staged a little bit. I can be like, oh, okay, like move your hand like down or up or like twist your head to the side or, or what have you, yeah. you know what I'm saying? But like one of my favorite things too about the wedding videos is like picking the song for it right. and like being able to like tell the story through the song. Yeah. Like I've had some like really cool ones off Music Bed that I've been able to find and all that good stuff. So yeah, shout out to Music Bed, yeah. you know? So like my experience with wedding photography, so like I got my first chance at it, like thanks to Brittany at BKB. Cause I needed like some sort of experience. So she let me second shoot a bunch of weddings end of 2019. So I got an experience like to see like the final to like end process of like the whole wedding day. But what I found is like, I don't know if you experienced this with doing wedding videos, weddings seem to be like this kind of field where you need like three years of experience for like an entry level start. Like it's very hard to get people to trust you off the bat if you don't have any wedding photo or any kind of wedding content to do. You were talking about the the music videos going south. Yo, weddings will kick your butt. Yeah. Absolutely. The weddings will kick your butt. And you definitely need the experience for it. Not everyone's going to get it like that. There's so many different elements, so many different shots you should look for. So, yeah. you know what I'm saying? And different gear that you need to like work up to get. Like, right. I rocked the 24 and the 55 during my weddings. But also during the ceremony, I had to switch to a certain different lens right. to be able to get the right focal length. You know what I'm saying? Also, so, so like you're not on top of people while you're doing it. So exactly, yeah. I remember like, used to having like the seventy to. I always rent the seventy to two hundred. Like try and get in there, but my wedding style has changed since yeah. then. So I, you know, go a different direction. But yeah, it's like I finally got like because I did um, a few engagements, a few couple shoots with my friends. But my first like wedding, so my mom got married like this past year. Oh, congratulations! So I was like, yeah, thank you. So I was like, I need to get like wedding video and photos. So, like I had uh, one of my cameras set up in my Ronin S and then I had the other one just kind of set standby. So like I get like three minutes of video, then run back over and pick up my other camera, take some pictures and then keep switching back oh, and Oh dude, Marvin like does that all. Like I'm like Marvin, when 
when you tell me that you do this stuff, I'm yeah. like, dude, I say a prayer for you, man, because like <laughs> that's like ridiculous. It's, it's it blows my mind that he can do that. Now speaking of Marvin, I I'm all with the trans. Yeah, yeah. you're talking about the video exactly. transitions. I gotta go. I know what's going transition. on. I got the I got the schedule. Yeah. So <laughs> Marvin is our good friend that does his big thing on Instagram is. If you want the best photos of Boston, you got to follow Media by Marvin on Instagram. Shout out to Media by Marvin. That's my bro right there. I got so much yeah. love for him, man. I don't know how he does it. In my mind, he's waking up before sunrise every single he day. He does. Out there. He does. Yeah. yeah, he does. And I know he has some... God, this dude has so many photos in the stash. Dude, he is so talented. And like, there were parts of my early stages of my career where like he would give me gigs to do, like recommend me or like bring like be brought along as like a second shooter so like dude he helped me out through some rough times so like shout out to him it's been great to be able to grow with someone like marvin and it's just he's just a genuine dude man right he's just just a genuine dude you know what like one thing i think we could both help marvin with is grow his casual gaming hour youtube channel (laughs) i love it and he's all about the gaming he's like yo he's a genuine and just a good dude you know what i'm saying he likes the gaming He's just a good dude, and yeah, man. Shout out to Marvin. He's it's great. like great because you talk about like I always ask one million drone questions because when I went to go get my drone <laughs> license, I like be like Marvin, like how'd you fly here, and like what do I need to know, like yeah. all these different things, and it's also to be able to be like, Yo, Marvin, so like what video games are you playing? Yeah, no, you gotta ask him about the video games. He yeah. showed me Spider Man um, when he got just got the PS Five, and yeah. I was like, this is so cool. Do you got like a favorite game that you like to play or are you not a gamer? Dude, I could like go totally into this. So like with work and everything now, I haven't been able to play a lot of video games. Like I had stopped on like God of War yeah. on the PS4, which is a super good game. Uh, but growing up, I was definitely into Pokemon. Definitely like if we're talking card games, even like Yu-Gi-Oh! Loved Yu-Gi-Oh! I had to play them on bunch of different like systems did you have one like of that. the um, disc things you dude i didn't yeah. but i'm about to make one and duel everyone um but yeah so like those in like final fantasy dude yeah. i don't know if you know about final fantasy but like those games like final fantasy 9 like those are like my favorites was i never i don't like i recommend it or i would always see the um, interest in like final fantasy but was one of those games where like decisions you made in one game affect what happens in another game? Like okay. zero okay. at all. Like nothing. Every game is its own entity, yeah. which is like super cool about so, it. So like gaming for me, like I love games that are great, like single player story kind of games. Uh-huh. So like Mass Effect, fantastic game franchise, except the very ending of the last game. Oh, for, no, no. How are they going to do you like that? Yeah, like for those of you that don't know what we're talking about, fantastic game, just don't play the last mission uh, kind of situation. No. But um, another great game like that is um, the Witcher series. So you don't have to play one or two, but you can kind of watch like the backstory on it. So Very you can cool. kind of understand the decisions you could be making in the third. But it's one of those games where like the decisions that you did make in the first two games do affect like how the storyline plays out in the third game itself. That's that is really cool. Yeah, I always saw my roommates play like The Witcher and all that stuff, and I always thought it was cool. I just like never got into yeah. it. Like in college, I was playing games like Destiny and like halo like of right. course like halo and um all the, the shooter games you don't you don't have to sit down for 60 hours yeah and the ps4 exclusives like um god of war is a big one god of war is awesome dude i used to play a lot of gears yeah. of war gears of war was sick actually um, when i was younger i got a nightmare from playing too much gears of war at once. <laughs> <The> I, <locust. laughs> dude i thought like when i was like younger i thought there'd be like a locust standing in my closet <laughs> <laughs> the cantus that was the scariest one because yeah. that thing could move he'd be like and then like somersault like yeah. over there i'm like yo what <laughs> <Exactly>. <laughs> yeah but um also what other games did i i used to, like siphon filter growing up like madden like I was oh, dude, as, a, as a hardcore madden guy i could just kill entire weekends playing madden oh okay so like, my okay. goal like i haven't played for like a while but like my goal is to like one day be like make it as like this videographer and then like hey you want to like join this like madden release and play madden i want to just like, hustle the heck out of some guys i love it yeah people yeah I, I had to stop playing after a while it wasn't too good anymore <laughs> <laughs> you get like you gotta like know all the hidden mechanics of the game to be good at it like if you know football it doesn't mean you're good at it right that's so true but like one game that's really easy to play on the fly a lot like you mentioned the show but like i love playing pokemon games on my computer as <sighs> like emulators like love pokemon. when i travel i'll just download like a pokemon emulator like on my computer or if like I want to hang out with my friends, but I don't care for what they're watching on TV. Yeah. I'll open my laptop and I'll start playing Pokemon Soul Silver on my computer just so I can hang out, but like not care like what's going on. Dude, on I know you didn't just mention my favorite game like ever. Soul Silver is like, like Silver and Soul Silver and like those Crystal, those games. Yeah. 
dude. So awesome. Okay, ready? Here's a question I like to ask every Pokemon fan. Yep. You get one starter, one legendary. Who's your traveling six? Oh, dude. How are you going to ask this right now? <laughs> dude, what? Oh, I've been out of the game for a while, so I can't give like... I know straight up Machamp. Okay. Like, Machamp is in my party. Like, I don't care. Like, I like Machamp. I can just g- give you, like, na- list of names of, like, people who would be, like, probably in my starting. Okay. All right. Um, Scizor is in there. This is a tough one. Yeah. There's so many damn Pokemon. I think there's, like, 900 now. Oh, really? Yeah. I feel like I only care about the first, like, three or four. Yeah? Dude. There's so many, like, Ryung, like, I love Alakazam. Like, there'd be a psychic type, like, yeah. Ryunkalus or, like, Alakazam would be in there. Um, there's a... Oh, you have oh a favorite gosh. evolution? I love Jolteon. Um, yeah, probably Jolteon. Yeah. Like, Electivire might be in there, like, Electabuzz's evolution. Um, I'll say one more, because I feel like I'm like... Who's your favorite legendary Pokemon? Oh, dang. That's tough, man. How are you gonna ask that? There's so there's so many now. Who did I like a lot, a lot? Um, I don't even want to say like Lugia is like Mac. I don't know yeah. if you played like Gale of Darkness, but that Dark Lugia was yeah, like sick. sick. That was super sick. Um, that's a low key, very underrated like Pokemon game that people don't remember. Yeah, I feel like, mm, damn. Like, probably, like, Rayquaza. Like, okay. if I was had to run with, like, someone, it'd probably be, like, Rayquaza. Nice. I think he's, like, nasty. Yeah. Like, my six, it's, like, original starters, I gotta go Blastoise. And then Lugia's always been my favorite legendary. Mm-hmm. And then I always loved Umbreon for, like, the Evolution. Sick. Umbreon is sick. Alakazam. And I always loved Onyx, too. And then you just need, you need some kind of flying type, whatever, kind of, like, John, like I actually um ho like the because everyone goes bird but like the hoot hoot goes to like ho like the owl kind of Pokemon. I was like that one. Yo, for like starters, there was a there's a water Pokemon in the before the sun was it before so Sun and Moon? Blastoise, um, for alligator, Mudkip, awesome. yeah, and Polion, Samorsat was like the um that was Pearl and no Samorsat was white and black and then I don't know the ones after that. Yeah. Whatever the water one was, was like super- Is the one in Smash? Greninja. 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 Yeah. Dude, he's nasty. Yeah. He's awesome. But yeah. So you watched the anime at all? Dude, I watched it last night. I'm not going to lie. Okay. I watched Sun and Moon. My friend said that the new series is on. I haven't got to play the new game, but like, ugh. For me, it's, like, it's hard because like, you think buy the new game. Like, I don't want to buy a DS or like, I've got a Switch, but I don't pay $60 for a Pokemon game. Yeah, yeah. I don't know, man. They'd be worth the 60 bucks. Yeah. I'd pay for it. But um, yeah, I watched, dude. One of the episodes damn near had me on the, like, Virja, like, tears. tears. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. One of the okay. Pokemon, like, passed away. Dude, I was like, funny. what? Yeah. I didn't know this was going to ha- I, like, could probably, yeah. like, foresee it happening. But, like, yeah. It hits you out of left field. I was like, what? What? I think so. There's a lot of, like, sad, like, cartoons and anime episodes out there. But I think the saddest episode I've ever seen on TV. We have a Futurama fan? I... No of it, but I didn't get to catch it. Okay, like so yeah. if you're like, if you're a fan of the show, most people go with the saddest episode being when Fry gets to reconnect with this dog from like back in like his original time. But for me, like one that goes a step further than that, so it's like he's back in his original time. He's looking for like his lucky four leaf clover. Uh-huh. But like when he has to go back to like his future time, he realizes that he'll never get to see his mom again. So like for some weird like magic of science, they get a scene where he gets to have an original conversation like with his mom, and it just punches you right in the heart like out of nowhere no. like you don't see it coming and then it's like you're sitting there crying you're like why am i crying watching this so i have a question for you so yeah. like do you feel like do you feel like anime and all that good stuff like affects your filmmaking honestly like sometimes like what i like about anime is that since it's not actual film like it's not like real i mean there is a lot of stuff that goes into it but since it's not like actual like people I can like mentally relax because like when I watch movies and TV shows, I'm like, okay, what are they doing with film movements? How's the lighting look? But a lot of times with like anime, like I can finally escape that. Yeah. But then like newer anime has been actually like low key trying to get into all that, just like disguised in the artwork. Like you start to see more foreground textures. You start to see like different kind of transitions and like, okay, I can actually see like me like trying to learn from this in a while. I agree. Yeah, I think it's just a mental like 
for now like mental getaway but like to be able to do some of the stuff that they do would be like super sick yeah like when people be like oh it's a cartoon it's stomachs for kids i'm like do you know how much time and effort and drawing and like animation goes into all this? oh my like, gosh i was even thinking watching the other day i was like how did they plan this these yeah. are so good like the episodes are so good yeah do you have like a set list like you now just like went back to the world of pokemon like do you have a list of animes you got to go back and watch <laughs> yeah. now always Yu-Gi-Oh. Yeah. Like, I'll go off on breaks. Um, like I'll watch Yu-Gi-Oh, like Pokemon. Um, I haven't really gotten into like anything else, unfortunately. Like in terms of like anime, but what's the Top Gun? I what? I, th- I think I don't. yeah. What was the one to do with the straw hat? That's um One Piece. One Piece. Sorry. Yeah. Yes. Yes. One Piece. I watched that with my friend a little bit. Like that was super cool. Um, I definitely watch them. Sometimes I wish I had like I lived in a different like world where like I could literally just watch anime. Yeah, and, like, like all day like, long. Like play video games and like all that stuff. But like this that's is, the goal. Like, you work really hard to just get back. Work to that working world, hard to know? just like yo. When I'm sixty, I'm gonna be playing Final Fantasy. Like yeah. my phone's you can't even reach me. Just no. playing Final Fantasy. But like, like hopefully watching. by then, like we can put on a headset and really be in Final Fantasy. Like dude, VR is gonna be so unreal like vr is gonna change everything like i think it was on um, the playstation vista like they went like they, they tried to do that with skyrim that put you like in the skyrim world but like it's kind of janky but like that Dude. like we're getting close like the skyrim like the videos that they put on facebook yeah. are just like hilarious like when people are like imitating it and they're like walking into things and yeah. like like doing all that stuff is just like super funny what's crazy is that like skyrim like came out like 2000 like 11 2012 like really early and it's still like it's been used for nine console cents as like the marketing game because people love it so much. That is so awesome. Shout out to like shout out to Skyrim. Shout out to video games. Shout Bethesda, out to video. we hate your glitches, but we love your games. <laughs> All right, cool. So you mentioned in the other podcast, we never actually got super into it. So like fantasy football, Zach, like Yo. talk to me. Yo, uh, all right. So I've been playing fantasy football for like 15 years. Like my dad got me into it. It's like one of our big connection pieces. Like I love like watching the games with my dad and like being in the same league with them yeah but then i'm in my like wall fan league and then i'm in like my college league and everything like that yo fantasy football makes the sunday the thursday the monday the tuesday now i yeah, guess and sometimes so much more in- yeah sometimes <laughs> wednesday so know. much more interesting it's a part of life uh it's not just a hobby it's a way of life i love fantasy football yeah so like me and my friends, like, I played fantasy football. I got into it, like, halfway through college. But my friends and I, we started a podcast called Why You're Wrong Fantasy Football Podcast. Because I feel like any time when it comes to, like, starts and decisions, like, who you're trying to be, like, literally, like, no, bro, you're wrong for starting that guy. Start this guy. So I'm like, let's just make a podcast about that dialect. Absolutely. So, like, for, like, my fantasy football information, like, I'm so sick of listening to, like, the big wigs on TV that... My favorite guys to listen to are the fantasy footballers. Have you yep. heard of them? Yep, of course. They're just going to them. It's like three different kinds of mindsets and advice. And they're so relatable that like my dream one day is to actually get on their fantasy football show as either a guest or even like their spitballers like podcast. I just want to hang out with them for like a day. So cool. So you're done with Matthew Berry? It's just like I got sick of Matthew <laughs> Berry real quick. <laughs> he was wrong too many times yeah. and too many key moments. Exactly. You know? Who'd you, uh, I rocked, dude, I rocked Derrick Henry this year. Uh, I came in second. That was the best I did, unfortunately. But I think anytime you can come in second in one league and yeah. third, that's a good fantasy season. I don't care what anyone says. Yeah, so I came in second, fifth, and then my third one, they gave it to me. Like, they basically gave me a team at 0 and 5 halfway through the season. They're like, do you want to take it over? And I was like, fine. I almost got in the playoffs. Oh! I was just, like, this close. That's crazy. But, um, no, my guys this year were like, I always somehow go wrong in wide receivers. Like, no matter what round it's in, no matter all the hype around it, no matter all the statistics saying they're going to a great year, whether the wide receiver I pick sucks. Really? But, yeah, this year. Um, I went with DJ Chark and D- DJ Moore. Wait, wait, who else you have? So, what well, I like, my big. No, nah, who else do you have? Because you can't be going with DJ <laughs> and that's it. So, I, oh um, my God, I traded for DK Metcalf. So okay, I, and okay. Then, I was I was the one who picked up Justin Jefferson off of waivers. Ooh. So wait, so how'd you go wrong? <laughs> so I went. I'll, I'll get to that. So basically, so the two different teams, my bread and butter guys were Dalvin Cook, yeah, beast, Aaron Jones, beast, and I listened to Mike Wright, the fantasy hitman, Antonio Gibson, my man, dude. Beast. Yeah, it's just like everyone wants to be like he's on the Redskins. He sucks. I'm like, God, like this dude is talented. Like, dude, you know who else is so talented? Who's like from the same draft class or whatever it is? Um, is a dude from the Rams. The um, Cam Akers. Dude, he 
keeps those legs moving. Yeah. So like the thing is like I drafted. So I love trying to pick like those running backs who could break out in draft. So I I drafted Cam Akers, Antonio Gibson, and um, the guy on the pit, Damian Harris. Just as like, okay, one of these three will hit. Solid, yeah. So like at the beginning of the year, like Rams by committee backfield sucks. Like I eventually had to drop Cam Akers from one league because he was just doing horrible. Dude, I thought he was going to be one of those like Henderson. Like I thought he was literally going to be at the level of them the whole year. Yeah. yeah. And then like literally like he starts to catch on. So I was able to pick him back up off of waivers. But in that league, I went wrong. Like basically championship week, me and my opponent, like both of our, like some of our players are doing well. Some of our players are doing bad. And I got like robbed. So I had Aaron Jones, and that's when um, AJ Dillon or AJ Villain stole 100 yards and two tutties from Aaron Jones. Those 25 points would have easily won me the game. Literally did nothing. But I go into uh, last game of the week, Patriots game. I'm up 10 points. He has the Bills defense and Jacoby Myers. So, like, there's a scenario where I win and a scenario where he wins. So, one of the things was like, there's a scenario, it's like, okay, I'm winning because. The Bills are crushing the Pats by so much, but the Pats have scored enough points with the Bills' defense has lost points. Mm-hmm. And Cam Newton is just being terrible. And Jacoby Myers has, like, two points. I'm, like, I'm up by, like, two and a half. I'm, like, I got this. Fourth quarter. Patriots allow Jared Stidham. Only drive he does something. Two passes for 30 yards. Jacoby Myers is, like, oh, no. Uh, it's, just like uh, it's just the knife twist. <laughs> the he was, like, the only reliable, like, receiver, too, for the Pats. Like, yeah. It's funny, the Patriots years, um, their receivers only had four touchdowns on the year. Despicable. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. This is a forgettable season. Like, we'll, we, I'm a Pats fan. He's a Seahawks fan. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Uh, we're not going to be talking about this uh, past 2020 season too much. Yeah. So, but like, the other, like, big blunder I had was, like, in the Money League. I came in fifth, but I was in a playoff game. And I was, like, one of the – I was going up against a Derrick Henry week where he scored 30. And I was, like, about to survive the Derrick Henry train. And then his tight end – Mike Kosicki doesn't catch one, but two touchdowns. So I end up losing by like three points. His second touchdown was through triple coverage against the Chiefs. Oh, it's literally no. like through triple coverage. The defender tips it and he catches it and falls into the end of the end zone. As I was like, oh, like, <sighs> dude, that's rough. Yo, shout out to the Buccaneers for winning the Super Bowl, yo. I don't <laughs> even care. Defense, I'm, my man. Dude, I'm shouting out to them and Tom Brady for winning. His seventh. Seventh. And now I got to live with that forever for living with Patriots fans in the Patriot world. It's like, it doesn't matter what happens or what you say. Like, they always get to come back with like, yo, what happened 2014, Seahawks fan? I'm just like, oh, dude, that was, dude, I can just tell you. I told this story recently too. Like, I remember watching that game and like, literally no one was talking. Like, yeah. as soon as they got to like the one or two yard line or whatever. Exactly. And like. I was like, oh, shoot. And, like, Malcolm Butler and stuff. Oh, like, yeah. crazy. Like, yo, we were in, like, Westfield. So it was, like, the, the walls were, yeah. like, terrible. And we, like, broke the wall. <laughs> like, you didn't even guess crazy. Dude, watching that, because, like, some of my friends I was with, like, I was down in North Carolina. But, like, the room is mostly Seahawks fans and people that didn't like the Patriots. Because, yeah. like, of course, if you're not from New England, you don't like the Patriots. And I was just like, wait, that didn't just say, like, this isn't just happening. Because it literally felt like a giant Super Bowl story where, like, Seahawks are down, like they need to score. It's like third and long. And you throw up the sideline because I hate that. People like it's Malcolm Butler, but the plays that led up to that play, the Jermaine Curse, like 30 yard catch where like it hits him, he doesn't catch it, but then it lands in his lap. And then it's like 11 yards, Marshawn Lynch basically has a clear path to the end zone. And everyone likes to say Malcolm Butler won that Super Bowl. The linebacker that tackled Marshawn Lynch at the one-yard line won that Super Bowl. Mm. That's what I like to say. Mm. But it was just like, okay, this is the same recipe as when Was it Hightower? Or? Yeah, it was Hightower. Yeah. Like, tripped him up, fell at the one-yard line. Dude, just, like, that's the thing about Hightower, too. Like, literally so clutch in, like, all these, like, Super exactly. Bowls, you know? And it's just like, man, like, this stinks so much. Because every single year, the Seahawks are a playoff team, but they just get, they get bounced in the divisional round. Yeah. Because it's just like it's frustrating. You got elite receivers, elite quarterback, and Pete Carroll's just like, I want to run the ball. So I just feel like like the Seahawks at this point, like the management, just like they still think they have a 2013 team, and they try to like run the offense that way. I'm just like, that's not what the team is anymore, guys. Like we yeah. got to change it up. I hear that. But that kind of like the personal connections you need with that to change the team up kind of also like goes into every sort of world because we have a lot of personal connections we work with in photography and videography. So. Like, you were telling me earlier, like, that's super important. So, like, do you have any thoughts on that at all? Yeah, man. I think, like, the biggest thing for me, like, the past few years, to like, in addition to everything I said before, is, like, 
meeting other like-minded people, meeting other videographers, meeting other photographers and people who are in VFX. I think that literally changed everything for me because it opened up my network. And then I could also see things that they were doing and like genuinely like comment on that and just be like, yo, that was dope. And yeah. then they do the same for me and it grows. Like people see my stuff more and it's cool, man. Like I love, I literally like love this. Like, I mean, I think it's been like, a beautiful thing like making more connections and at first i feel like i was like i wanted myself to win and i couldn't share the love but i feel so confident in like my ability to do you know what i do to be able to share that love to other people like right. why, why wouldn't you comment on someone's thing like who's doing a really good job you know exactly. or just needs a little bit of encouragement you right know what i'm saying like when you believe in yourself and you believe in what you do like you you should always i feel like you should always be able to give back and like share that love you know? right and then like when someone else that also like works in the same field they think that you're doing well it's like wait that person thinks i'm doing well okay well, i must be doing something right yeah kind of situation absolutely i totally agree with that and also just like having something that like people can connect with you with like outside of like i think it's super important that people like us we share like our actual personal lives with stuff because yeah we might be good at what we do but then it's just like if someone can connect with like one of your hobbies or like something you do outside of the work there's more of a connection for them to come back and use you in the future absolutely instagram i'm trying i'm gonna be on live more i gotta be on something you know what i'm saying i gotta you know y'all gotta relate to I don't me care i'm a human too only, i don't care if there's only two people watching i'm gonna try to do a kind of situation <laughs> hey i know there's five thousand people watching right now no i'm just kidding <laughs> But Instagram, Facebook, I'm trying. Let me get on live a little bit more. Let me show you guys I'm a human being. Right, like one of my things, like once my YouTube channel turned one year, I was like, okay, I got to start posting on everything now. Because it's like, okay, YouTube, Instagram, but now it's like YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, like whatever else out, is just out there. TikTok now. It's just, you need something. Absolutely. I think it's so interesting too, because it's like the vulnerability to put yourself out there yeah. is like, uh, like, you know what I'm saying? Like even yesterday, like that post, like with my, my intern and everything like that, like me just going to his house, like it wasn't like a well-produced like video. Like we didn't like do like three camera angles and yeah. do all that stuff. And I didn't even get to show myself at that. And I'm like, oh, like, you know, but like just post it. Like, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Like, if Gary V talks about it too. It's like being perfect. Like you have like the insecurities, like I want to be able to show my best stuff. But like also at the same time, it's like, if you don't post it, like people aren't going to see you. And I think sometimes you got to fire it out, you know? Right. Like, I mean, like one of my favorite photographers and videographers and like basically the guy you go to on YouTube, if you need to learn something about Peter, Peter McKinnon. Peter yeah. McKinnon, yeah. <laughs> I, did, I heard he, did he shave his head recently? No. So like he, um, he, sh I went, unless this is brand new news, but last time I checked, he was trying to grow it back out a third time. Oh, I don't know, man. I heard he's like shaved or something like that. I'm going to have to check it right now. No, I'm just kidding. I look, but you yeah, want to believe that my creative power comes from my hair. Like, it's literally like <laughs> the, the power yeah. within. <laughs> the moment I have to cut this is like when I have to give up kind of situation. It's like you cut my power source off, man. Yo, that's crazy. I love it. I don't have it anymore. Shoot. My power source comes you, just like You got the, the beard. Like, I you got just the need, beard, yeah. man. Hey, you know what I'm saying? Got the beer going for me. But it's like one thing I do actually like about this field is I find that people who are working in like creatives like will do their best and help out other creatives. But what I hate is that the clients are the ones that kind of turn people against each other kind of situation. Because, mm. for example, like when it comes to like wedding sites, like I signed up for Wedding Wire and the Knot and it's just like you I get. Did, I did too. <laughs> yeah. You get the message where it's like, hey, like what's your information? What are your prices? I'm like, cool, here it is. But sometimes you don't get a response because, you know, they sent that out to like 10 other photographers. I'm just like. Yeah, they're fishing. Yeah. They're fishing. Yep. Or it's like I've been like, I've thought like I had to confirm with someone that like, sorry, you went with the other person because they just happened to respond like 10 minutes before you. I'm just like, well, why are you texting both of us at the same exact time? Yeah, yeah. I get, yeah, and I, it's, it stinks, but I get it. People are just looking out for themselves, right. um, to I mean, do the best for like, you know, exactly. not selfishly, but like to do the best, like for themselves and everything like that. But also at the yeah. same time, it's like, dang, like we really want to work on. This. Yeah. It's like, a, it's like one of those like part of life kind of things where for me, it's like, yeah, I totally get it. But like, I also want to kind of find a way I want to work in some sort of field where like I can cut as much of that out as possible. I hear you. I hear you. Yo, shout out to you too, man. I see all the B-roll, <laughs> man, stop playing. I see all the, the B-roll like sequences that you do and everything like that. Like it's like, I always felt like sometimes like I need to work on like my B-roll. So yeah. I'm taking notes and like, I, li I like what you do. You yeah. know what I'm saying? You do a really good job. From my experience with that, it's like sometimes like I'll get there and get, I can get really flustered like in shoe. Like if I didn't plan something, Cause I haven't gotten used to winging it yet. Yeah. But one thing like I realized is like when you're trying to get like good B-roll, like two of the things that you just need to make sure you do is that 
the like the movement all kind of flows together mm -hmm. and that you just need some sort of foreground element because you just need to show that the actual camera itself is moving yeah and then it looks great like for example, if you're walking down the street and you don't show anything moving below it, it kind of looks off and it's shaky. Mm -hmm. But it's just like if you get like a little bit of a car or a sign in it and you can kind of show that like, oh, I'm kind of like slowly just walking by this car. It looks a thousand times Making better. Making dimensional and everything like that. Yeah. Using keyframes, I bet, too. Yeah. Using keyframes. Like, I, I think that was like a huge difference for me. Like Definitely. in the past like year or two, like using keyframes. But I'm, I don't know if you do you use them a, a lot or I use them like every now and then like if I need to like make sure something is like aligned or just like the kind of transition a little bit better you can use them mm -hmm. but I feel like it takes reels like the people who can just naturally do in camera motions without doing anything or just it blows me away how times that they can be like you ever follow those Instagram pages whether it's like art of b-roll or like filmmakers way and it's just like the top is seeing like the final product and below is just like the person moving around with the camera I'm just like it looks like they're literally just like moving everywhere with the camera. Like, how did they get it so buttery? Dude, smooth? those videos hit. Yeah. Those top and bottom, like, BTS videos, those hit. Definitely. For sure. Dad, do you have anything, like, the last few words you want to throw out for the podcast? Oh, man, yo, thank you so much to everyone who's been, like, supporting me uh, throughout this journey so far. Like, I really appreciate you guys. Um, I don't even know which camera to look at. I'm looking at yeah, like, look, both cameras. You're looking everywhere. I'm looking, I'm looking, at, I'm looking yeah. right at this camera here. But yeah, shout out to you guys. Um, I'll say for videography, like this isn't just me like picking up a camera and like shooting and being at your event and you know all that good stuff. Like it's really an experience, and I feel like when people buy video, like you know video production or what have you from me they're buying an experience i feel like i'm a personable guy i feel like when i'm coming to your wedding or your music video i'm making that an experience for you and i take like a lot of pride in that so i really appreciate everyone who's like believed in me so far and uh i just really appreciate you know being on this podcast with you man Dude, it's been a really I great love time. the fact you wanted to come on here man that's awesome so if you guys want to follow more of zach you can find him at <laughs> hbz media on instagram yeah hbz underscore media with the under Gotta make as you mess that and scroll up, it's hard to find someone. You know. I know, right? And then um, you can also find his music videos on YouTube. There's a HBZ Media you can subscribe to. Yep, I have one. I, I usually there's sometimes for other artists like they usually post on their thing, but I'm gonna get that going and yeah. have people go post to my platform. I think that's like a really cool way. And then you got some merch too that you can buy. Some Absolutely, videos. you guys can go to my website www.hbzmedia.video. Um, we can post the links and everything like that. I have my HBZ Media Classic hoodies with the white and then the black, um, like all around and everything like that. Um, yo, definitely check those out and uh, and go support. Definitely. Well, thanks for coming on, Zach. And Thank you, you so know, much, man. Keep on creating. Dude, it. my man. Pat